My brothers and sisters of Islam, today our life is engulfed in running after this dunya. This fleeting dunya, the example of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is the example of an a rain that falls, that makes the farmers very happy thinking that his crops are going to be so plentiful. But very soon the rain dries up and the crops become yellow, dry, and then very soon it comes down to the earth destroyed. This is the value of the work that we do today. What we run after today, that is the most coveted of all today, Ya Akhwati, will be looked at one day as nothing but a timepiece. My brothers and sisters, Islam, this is the curse of running after this dunya. Is that even if you win the rat race, you are still a rat. Is that if you win this race, you are still nothing more than the examples of those people who are running after their desires. On the other hand, those who run after the Akhirah, then by Allah, what a pleasurable life they lead. They wake up in the morning working for the cause of Allah, working for the pleasure of Allah. And they spend the nights in the pleasure of Allah. They spend their days making Muslimin happy, knowing that the reward of making a Muslim happy is going to be nothing but Jannah. And they go to sleep happy knowing that the best of happiness will be the day that they meet Allah Azzawajal, when Allah will reward them with nothing but Jannah. Those who work for the Akhirah Ikhwati are very few in number today. But it is only because only few have really, really realized how beautiful this life really is. Al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah, he said in a statement, Ya ayyuha shabab, O oh young men and women, I'malu lil akhirah, work for the akhirah. For verily I found in my life that anyone who works for the akhirah, Allah also gives him the dunya. Then he continues and he says, But I've never ever found in my life that anyone who works for the dunya ever gets anything from the akhirah. If you work your nine to five day to day life, busy earning a livelihood, busy paying for your house, busy paying for your rent, then that is the curse that you have earned by your own hands. But if you have the power and the courage to make the step to work for the cause of Allah then take the glad tidings that Allah will be enough for your, for your dunya. It is reported in the books of Ibn Abi Dunya rahimahullah, in Hulyat al Awliya, and also reported by Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, in his Fatawa, that he quotes Sufyan ibn Uwayna rahimahullah, the Imam of Ahl al Makkah, saying that when the scholars used to write to each other, they used to write the following three sentences to each other. They used to write, Whoever fixes his secret affairs at night, Allah will fix his public affairs. Whoever fixes that which is between him and Allah, Allah will fix that which is between him and people. And the third thing that they used to say is whoever works for his akhirah, Allah will be enough for his dunya. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we are surrounded by people who do not realize the value of these statements. That to work for the akhirah is to liberate yourself. That to work for akhirah, to work inviting people to Islam, to work as a teacher of Islam, to work to study Islam, or an Islamic project that benefits the Muslim Ummah. The Ikhwati, they are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffices them in their life. When I used to live in Australia as a medical doctor, I used to earn a good income as a medical doctor. But my life was after money. I went from job to job, earning more money to more money. And wallahi, as more money came in, my needs went up. Suddenly we needed a new car. Suddenly we needed a second car. Suddenly the children had to from public schools to private schools. Suddenly we needed to live in a better home. Suddenly we needed to go for a more expensive holiday. Suddenly all that extra money went away. And when it came for Hajj, I didn't have extra money to go for Hajj. When it came to take my family for Umrah, I had no extra money. When it came for Sadaqah Ramadan, I had nothing but zakat to give. Ye ikhwati, don't lead such a life. It is a cursed life. Don't lead such a life. I can tell you 
As a doctor, I earn far more than many people make in their own jobs. But it's a cursed life because your needs go up at the same time. But rather work for the Akhirah, ya ikhwati. Even if less comes to you, your needs will be less and your contentment is far more. Who is there that can compare to the contentment of a slave of Allah Azzawajal when he works from the Akhirah being free of the needs of this dunya? Who is there that can, can compare to the contentment and the love between a husband and wife that is helping each other to work for the Akhirah when their needs are less and their happiness in their hearts are more? Who is there that can compare with this ikhwati? No one can. My brothers and sisters in Islam, look at the happiness of the Prophet Sallallahu the man who used to give the giving of someone who never ever feared poverty. My Shaykh, may Allah have mercy upon him, used to say, look at how much Allah has given his enemies. Do you think, O oh Muslim, the one who is in the party of Allah, the helper of Allah, that Allah will withhold his money from you? Our work today, our professions are merely tools, means for the wealth that Allah has already written for us to come to us. And wallahi, if we didn't have this job, had something else, even the same thing, the same risk that Allah has written would come to us, nothing could stop it. My brothers and sisters of Islam, the worst of emotions through which the shaitan controls us, through which politicians control us today, through which the media control us today is the emotion called fear. The fear of everything else is something that curses you, that some, that's something that shackles you to the ground. But it is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that liberates you. Because indeed it is shaitan who draws people to fear, who tells people to make decisions based on fear. Fear of poverty, fear of being unable to pay the rent, fear of being unable to put food on the table. Fear of all of these things shackle you to the ground. Take, it, take you away from the true human being that you are. We are the same flesh and blood as Umar. We are the same flesh and blood as Khalid and Walid. We're the same flesh and blood as Salahuddin Ayyubi. Radiallahu anhum ajma'een. We are the same flesh and blood. But we are a different character because our minds have deceived us and our hearts have left us. My brothers and sisters of Islam, liberate yourselves by not being afraid of anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Liberate yourselves by knowing that there is no, uh, no one else who can free you from the shackles of running after this dunya except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be of those people like Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu who went on a mountain and he said, O dunya, for whom have you presented yourself and beautified yourself today? Is it for me, Ali, that you are trying to seduce today? For indeed I have divorced you and I say it again, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times. There is no way for me to ever come back to you, O dunya. My brothers and sisters of Islam, divorce the dunya. And no, I am not telling you to not make money. I'm telling you to make money but not be attached to it. I'm telling you to focus on your akhirah more than your dunya. I'm telling you to find a work that will give you risk. Through working for Allah Zawajal than working for this dunya, there are many ways to make money, wallahi. Seek it out. My father, may Allah have mercy upon him. 55, 56 years old. He decided to work for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and join a dawah organization on building schools. Wallahi, he tells me that when he used to work in his own business and he's a sole trader, one person on his own, when he used to do it on his own, he used to make far less money than what he does now, which is working more for the Akhirah, working more on these projects and building Islamic schools worldwide. He has far more wealth coming to him today. Because when you work for the Akhirah, your pleasure is the Akhirah. Your pleasure is in spending time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not with anything else. It was reported that Wahhab ibn Munabbih, one of the scholars, he was asked, Ya Wahab, why is it that when we bury the dead, we do not cry? He said, because the reason why we dislike talking about the hereafter. The scholar Wahab the Munabbi said, because we have built our dunya, but we have destroyed our akhirah. We have built palaces in this world, real estate in this world. We own homes and houses here. 
but we have destroyed the palaces of the hereafter. We have destroyed our akhirah, even though the akhirah is so easy to build, wallahi. In Musnad Imam Ahmed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, whoever says, قُلْ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Ten times, Allah will build for him a palace in Jannah. It takes us a lifetime to buy a house in this dunya, ya khuti. What has deceived us from the real state of the akhirah? It is only because we are so busy with running after this dunya. The scholars of Islam used to say that if you knew the value of working for the akhirah and the pleasure that a person gets by working for the akhirah, then you would fight people over it. If you knew the pleasure of working for the cause of Allah Azawajal, and putting happiness in the face of a believer, you would fight people over it. One of the things that they used to say is that the difference between someone who works for the dunya and someone who works for the akhirah is the number of people that pray over the janazah. How many true authentic people will pray over the janazah for you? How many people will pray your janazah, my brother? And brother, akhi, who will pray for you? Perhaps your own children. Sometimes our own children will not pray because they'll be in some other country somewhere earning their livelihood. Busy away from the family by the time they arrive, the father or mother has been buried already. We're not even blessed by having our own children pray our own janazah. How many of us, we have to announce in masajid, send SMSs, my father passed away, mother passed away, please come to the janazah. And we don't even come because we're busy at work. How many people will pray over us, ikhwati? And this is why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah used to say to the people, he used to say to the Ahl al-Bid'ah, he used to say the difference between us and you will be the number of people praying our janazah. It was reported that Muawiyah ibn Muawiyah al-Layti rahimahullah, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he passed away, al dhahabi rahimahullah reports a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the biography of Muawiyah ibn Muawiyah al-Laythi, that no less than 70,000 angels came down to pray over the body of Muawiyah ibn Muawiyah al-Laythi. In the authentic narration in Bukhari, it is reported that when the Prophet ﷺ was burying Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, he was tiptoeing, tiptoeing. And Umar said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you tiptoeing? He said, because I cannot find a single place to put my foot from the number of angels that have come down to pray over the body of Sa'ad the Mu'ad. They were a people who worked for the Akhirah, that's why the unseen world from the heavens came down, leaving their work came down. Despite looking after the affairs of the heavens and the earth, they came down to pray over his body. Ya Akhwati, how many people will pray for us? How many angels will pray for us? Why would they pray? Why would they even leave their jobs? You have done nothing for them. You've done nothing for yourself, Ikhwani. My brothers and sisters in Islam, before this happens to us, be of those people who make a firm, determined move to be of those people who work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that only few of my slaves praise me. No. But Allah said only a few of my slaves thank me. The reason why is because thanks is more than praise. Muslims praise Allah. Non-Muslims praise Allah. Jews and Christians say hallelujah, which is praise to God. So a lot of people say praise to God. But thanks, that's something else. The scholars of Islam say that thanks is a level above praise. So when you praise Allah, you say alhamdulillah. When you thank him, you do two more things on top of saying Alhamdulillah and thanks to Allah with your mouth. The second thing you do when you want to thank Allah is that you talk, to, talk about Allah's blessings to others. The third thing you do if you want to thank Allah on top of just talking about Allah's blessings to others is that you do something for Allah. You give Allah back something, a gift to Allah. So the scholars, they give back their life and their pleasures and running after this dunya, they give it to Allah. The mutabarri'een, the mutasaddiqeen, they give their money for Allah. Righteous women, they raise their children as a gift for Allah. What are you going to do? What are you going to give Allah? 
What have you given to Allah? What will you give Allah back? How will you thank Allah for what he has done for you? How will you thank Allah, ya khwani? This is the question I want to leave with you today. If you thank Allah by working for his cause, by giving your wealth for him, by working for your akhirah, Allah will give you back. Ya ikhwati, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah As-Saf, O you who believe, shall I guide you to a business transaction that will save you from the fire of Jahannam? First have faith and iman. But the second thing Allah wants from us, that you struggle in the path of Allah, a comprehensive struggle, totally with your money, your blood and your sweat and tears. Today we don't struggle for the cause of Allah enough. We say to our children, become a doctor so you can make a lot of money so that you can help people through your money. We say be a doctor so you can help people but the doctors are busy helping themselves. They are busy making money. When will they actually help the people? We say become a lawyer so you can help Islam. But the lawyers are busy today helping themselves. When will they help Allah? Ya ikhwati, struggle for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the way the Sahaba struggled. They would pray all night, struggle in the morning, give all the sadaqah away, go to sleep begging Allah to accept their deeds being afraid of the sins they did that, that day. Going to Hudayfa and saying, Oh Hudayfa, did the Prophet ﷺ say that I was a munafiq? Abdullah ibn Shaqiq said, I met 30 of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. From them, I met the Ashar Abu Bashiri. And every single one of them was worried that he was a munafiq. Ikhwati, how many of us think that we are Muslim, Muslimin, Mu'mineen? But it might be that we're munafiqeen because we say with our words what we do not prove with our actions. If you love Allah, then why do you not work for Him? If you love Islam, why do you not spend time for Him? Why don't you join a dawah organization? Why don't you start a project that helps Muslims? Can't you build a masjid? Why can't you help an orphan? Why can't you spread a book that is there? Put your money down, reprint a book that Muslims can benefit. Don't you have a Facebook account, oh young brothers and sisters in the audience? Can't you use it to spread Islam? Can't you pay someone to put up a website for Allah? Can't you go to a masjid and clean the bathroom? Can't you come to this organization, this center and say, can I help you with anything? Can't you have your money given away to the cause of Allah? Why can't you help Allah's deen? It's because, ya khuti, we need to make this a priority for us. That is better for you if you only knew. If you do these two things, Allah will give you three things. What are those three things? So Allah continues in the end of Surah as saf and He says, He will forgive your sins. Allahu Akbar, Ya Rabb. How many sins have we accumulated, Ya Rabb, subhanAllah. And He will enter into gardens beneath which rivers flow and beautiful dwellings in the Garden of Eden. That is the supreme success. Ikhwati, the success that we're talking about is azim, great. The third thing, which is what we all need right now, we are craving for. Another thing that you are missing and you love, O oh Muslimi, what is it? Help from Allah and an early victory. Help in Syria, help in Palestine, help in Kashmir, help in Chechnya, help in Philippines, help in every single country where Muslims are in need and in trouble. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, Work for Allah, for indeed Allah will be enough for your dunya. Allah will give you just like He gives to the birds. Wallahi, today we do not see birds falling off from the sky being hungry. But wallahi, we see human beings falling down from hunger dying. And that is only because wallahi, our tawakkul on Allah is so less. And let me end this khutbah today by reminding you of what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he says. He says, and know this, O oh my brother, that a tawakkul on Allah and working for the Akhirah is half of your religion. So if you're not working for the Akhirah, getting involved in some good khair or the other, then by Allah, you are missing out on half of your religion. 